With Starship Flight 9 officially over, SpaceX's engineers are already racing to prepare for Flight 10. But before the next test can actually clear the pad, several critical hurdles must be cleared. Here's what we know so far, what remains unsolved, and why Flight 10 could prove the most important Starship flight to date. First, a quick recap of Flight 9, SpaceX's third consecutive Starship program failure. Despite that, Starbase is far from idling. Ships 36 and 37 are rolling through final assembly and acceptance tests as we speak. And engineers are running cryogenic propellant loading trials, pressure checks, and ground system checks to verify each and every system is ready for flight conditions. So in other words, while Flight 9's anomalies were fresh, Ship 36 has already been built to address those exact issues, and SpaceX will continue testing these fixes before Flight 10 hardware even reaches the pad. The FAA's mishap investigation into ship loss of altitude control on Flight 9 will continue, and by design, SpaceX leads the technical investigation, but the FAA holds final sign-off authority before any reflight. Roughly speaking, these investigations can take anywhere from just a few weeks to a couple months depending on how deep the root cause runs. If, for example, the failure traces back to a simple avionics glitch, SpaceX might validate the fix in weeks. But if the issue originates in a propellant plumbing design, that could require a more extensive redesign, tile reworks, or multiple ground test campaigns, which could take months, pushing back the next flight of Starship to midsummer. Once the mishap probe wraps, expect SpaceX to repeat Flight 9's mission profile almost exactly, effectively a Flight 9.1. And that mission sequence was designed to tick three boxes crucial for progressing toward orbital certification. In space relight of a Raptor engine without a reliable relight, Starship can't perform a controlled deorbit or landing burn. Flight 9 lost altitude control before attempting that relight. So it never got the chance to prove the ignition sequence. On Flight 9, the Starlink door mechanisms failed to open in vacuum, so no demo sats reached their targets. SpaceX needs a successful door cycle in microgravity to demonstrate its satellite release hardware will work when it matters. SpaceX needs validation of Block 2 aerodynamic and thermal changes. The Block 2 variant introduced a revamped heat shield layout, thicker tiles, different gap fillers, and subtle tweaks to the nose cone fairing. Flight 9 revealed bugs in the propellant feed system too, but lingering aerodynamic and heat shield unknowns still linger. Another repeat run will give SpaceX engineers the telemetry they need to confirm these modifications. Now, digging deeper into Block 2 upgrades, while Flight 7 through 9 have flushed out the propellant system's weak points, chiefly uneven pressurization leading to slosh dynamics, there remains unanswered questions about the updated forward heat shield tiles and aerodynamic fairings. Early data suggests that at hypersonic speed, some tiles on Ship 35 may have experienced uneven heating or delamination under re-entry loads. So we don't know exactly how severe those stresses were, but engineers will closely inspect every single tile on the next Starship prior to Flight 10 and run fresh round of arc jet tests on those tile materials to verify they can withstand re-entry temperatures above 1600 degrees Celsius. Once all Block 2 tiles are in place in Ship 36 and accepted via infrared scanning and acoustic resonance tests, SpaceX can fuel the vehicle for full stack cryo test. That's typically the final hurdle before stacking the booster and rolling to the launch mount. At that point, the FAA sign off becomes the last major box to check. But here's where things get really interesting. SpaceX's flight cadence remains very aggressive. Even as the FAA investigates, Starbase crews continue parallel testing on the ship running cryogenic proof tests, final Raptor spare swaps, and subscale aerodynamic bang tests on nose cone samples. And meanwhile, the booster is undergoing regression tests to ensure the super heavy stage can handle repeated full thrust firings and engine chamber pressure cycles. We don't know what exactly with a fix on Flight 9's booster failed, an engine mount flex issue or an overpressurization in the hydraulic slew arms, 
But whatever the cause was, the booster will be validated well before Ship 36 ever touches propellant. What should we watch for next, though? So let's keep an eye on SpaceX's public filing of the FAA's final mishap report. If it's a narrow one-component software patch, Flight 9 could arrive in about four to six weeks. Now, if the report digs into structural or thermal redesigns, we might be looking at closer to two to three months, midsummer. If SpaceX nails the in-space Raptor relay, manages a successful dummy Starlink deployment, and validates the enhanced heat shield in a single flight, they'll have effectively checked off the FAA's biggest concerns clearing the path for orbital trajectory attempts going forward. But failure to resolve even one of those items could cascade into yet another prolonged ground campaign. That in turn raises new questions. Could a lingering propellant feed bug require a wholesale redesign? Are there hidden aerodynamic instabilities at Mach 10 that only reveal themselves under full stack conditions? And if the FAA demands additional testing... Will SpaceX still attempt Flight 11 before summer? Hmm. Well, Flight 10's outcome will determine whether Starship's Block 2 era finally advances toward orbit, or if Starbase must regroup for another round of fixes for Flight 11, Flight 12, etc. Now, once we see the next round of tests and eventually that FAA sign-off, we should have a much clearer picture of whether Block 2 can truly deliver before Block 3 is added to the flight schedule.